Welcome to the Keeping It Israel podcast with Jeff Futers, where Jeff and his guests talk everything Israel as it relates to Christian faith and the church. If you are a Christian and you stand with Israel, you will be encouraged and challenged by this podcast. And if you're not so sure about the whole Israel thing, you need to learn how your faith connects with Israel and why standing with Israel matters. Now here's Jeff with today's guest. Welcome to the podcast today. And my guest today is Amy Flattery. Amy is the director of the Center for Holy Land Studies for the Assemblies of God in uh, the USA. So welcome, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so You're- much. I'm so happy to be here. Well, it's uh, it's great to have you. And I uh, wanted to reach out to you because uh, a few years back, two and a half years ago, maybe, um, we chatted at length about getting students to the land of Israel. It was something that was on my heart here in Canada to be able to uh, help some of our colleges have student have their students have this experience that uh, I believe is life changing, and I believe also uh, you know makes for a totally different experience in the pastorate if somebody sort of learns early and and gets to experience early uh, what is the land of Israel. And so you guys were so helpful. You sent me so much information and uh, some of your some of your material. And we, um, you know, we were able to finally get a college here to sign on and had a trip ready to go this year. But as I have already shared with you, that was canceled. Uh, everybody's trips are being canceled this year. So uh, yeah. it's nothing new. But uh, I wanted just to to talk to you a little bit. First of all, you have some history in the land of Israel personally. Uh, what? Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, well, I always love the Lord, but after college, I went and did biblical studies actually at Calvin College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, Afterwards, what was I going to do? Well, I wanted to keep studying Jesus. So we're better to do that um, than Israel. So I actually moved there. I lived there six years and studied second temple period Judaism and the origins of Christianity, which is summarize it it's study around the life of Jesus basically and so Mm -hmm. I lived there for that long and I it has it has definitely changed my life and perspective and views and I'm so thankful for the time I was able to spend there Mm -hmm. now uh your involvement now with the center for holy land studies tell us how that all came about So the Assemblies of God uh, really has an investment in Israel, but also they wanted to increase knowledge, education, travel to the lands of the Bible to help pastors and students and laity even to better understand their Bible and then better be able to spread the message. Because as you know, when you go, uh, the Bible just opens up even in greater ways that you can't really explain until you get there in some ways. Um, And so the whole purpose was to really increase education and study of the Bible in the lands of the Bible. That was the whole point. Um, And we started 11 years ago. And since then, I think we've been able to take 16 or 1700 people over a year, almost to the lands of the Bible. So we've been able to be uh, successful in doing that. And it's, I think it's changed a lot of people's lives, especially our students. Yeah. Sorry. 16 to 1700 people a year, not, not in total every That's year. We've grown too. So we started very small, obviously. Um, we were slated to take 16 or 1700 this year. So I would say altogether, we've taken several, several thousand um, mm. who've been able to go over with us. So yeah. Fantastic. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, you know, here in, in Canada, the program that we were, that we were working on, um, we felt like because it was so new, we needed to subsidize these students and, and help them to get there. Does the AFG do anything like that? Yes. Initially, especially they did help subsidize, uh, And even to the point of sending out letters from our leadership to people to help the students raise the extra funds Mm -hmm. in order to do it. Um, I think the investment they saw in their students uh, 
would be life changing for the the assemblies of God going forward. And so you're investing not only now, but for 20 years from now, um, right. in the pulpits and and the teachings and things like that. So it's a long term um, and a short term investment, but with a good reason and for good purpose. Now, I know that uh, the program has expanded beyond just Israel. Uh, you, yeah. you do visit some other Bible lands. Tell us a little bit about that. We do. We uh, think it's important for us to go to all of the lands of the Bible so that we can tell the full story. So hmm. Jesus didn't go to Hawaii yet, so we don't get to go there, although sometimes <laughs> wouldn't it be neat. Uh, but we do. We go to Israel, Jordan, Turkey, Greece, and Italy. So we have programs that okay. go to all of those. So especially if um, students have already been and done the Israel Jordan portion with us, well, we want to fulfill the rest of it and do the Greece, Turkey, Italy portion too. So we especially focus on our students for those programs. Okay. Now, uh, is that is that two different kinds of trips and itineraries or is yeah. that how that works? Yes. So, well, well if we're do, talking about the students, the students can go on a three-week Israel Jordan program and follow it right up with another three weeks in Greece, Turkey, and Italy. Wow. So they can either choose to do the whole six weeks or every other year they can have the option of going on the following one. So we try to set it up. It's directly after it so that they can always choose to do that. And then we've also added on um, a dig for a week even on the back end at Shiloh for students who oh, even wow. go and do that as well, which has been, Shiloh's amazing and their dig excavations are amazing, but also their, their devotional life is amazing. Every morning before they start, there's prayer and they do devotion. It's really an amazing experience. So we've started to try to put that in with it as well. Um, mm. We do other trips too, of course, for leaders and anyone who wants to go. I'm actually even heading to Turkey in a few weeks because it's open. Um, wow. So I'm, I'm going to go in, check it out, and do a lot of filming and recording in Turkey because there's so much that happened. So uh, Israel is Israel because, hello, that's where the Lord was too, right? But mm -hmm. there's a lot we can learn from the other countries, so we certainly include them. Oh, absolutely. I think when we looked at... Uh, you know, the, the various lands of the Bible that uh, most of the New Testament, you know, excluding the Gospels and, and part of the book of Acts happened in those other those other countries. Yes. Yeah. And so it is a significant place. Now, you know, our ministry, First Century Foundations, is focused on uh, praying for and blessing the land of Israel and mm -hmm. helping ministries there that are on the ground, uh, you know, during doing the work of the kingdom. That's that's what First Century Foundations is all about. And so we are starting at least with the, with the student experience just in Israel. But uh, when you talk about the foundations of the first century and, and the first century church, uh, of course, it expands way beyond that. And I think that some of our, our biblical journeys, I hope, uh, will be able to expand beyond that as well. We've actually done some tours uh, into Greece. We did one just a couple of years back and are hoping to uh, put another one on the, on the map. It's so hard to plan right now though. It's just like, I, I don't know what to, to say about this. I don't know how, uh, you know, whether or not people will actually want to travel at this point uh, or think that even in a year that they could, I don't know. What are you finding? It, it, it's actually, um, I don't want to say it's such a guessing game, but it, it almost is in some ways it's a uh, it's whether do you start promoting trips right now when all this stuff is going on but yet we still find that there are people who are calling every day to register for programs because they're hopeful and they want they want to go and they want to travel hmm. again and that kind of life to start i'm sure there will be some new policies in place um whether there's COVID testing or something when you land or things like that. But those are things we'll work through. Um, of right. course, we'll be as safe as we can for everybody. So it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, playing this, hey, let's, let's go ahead and promote what we're doing. If it can't work, we'll just adjust. And we adjust the dates. And I think that's blessed are the flexible right now. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> anyone who can be flexible, yes. uh, yours is the kingdom. So I think that that that's really important right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just still continuing the work and do your best in that regard and just see what the Lord will help you do. Um, there are also things you can always put out. I mean, you're doing this. This is great. And there's still mm-hmm. content that we can give and learning that we can give, which is why I'm flying to Turkey, but I, I'm not taking a group with me right now. I will always go and check it out before I take anyone with me right sure. now. Because I want to make sure everything is good. I want to know the systems. I want to know how it's running. I want to make sure it's safe, that the, you know, the clean measures are great. And, and so I think everybody in the world is working hard to try and implement things so that life can get back to normal and that tourism yes. can build up again. So we're finding out that there are, people want to go. They're ready. They're ready. <laughs> okay. Do you have, do you, are you promoting uh, programs for Israel this coming year? We actually have, I think we have 37 programs in 2021 right now okay. um, that we are, that are set to go. Now, from what I hear, maybe Israel's going to open in March-ish, April-ish, you know, but we'll see. Um, if not, what we've done, and I think it's, it's good, is we've set a secondary date. So like the people know if okay. it's not going at this time, it's going to go at this time. So they've got, and it's not that much later, it's maybe a few months, but they've got these options at least where it's not, I have to wait a whole nother year or two mm-hmm. years or, you know, and so we have right. tried to do that to help out. And um, we still have our program set, but we'll just have to see how it all turns out. Um, but we're ready when it does, I guess I would say. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I I sort of heard the March uh, the March month uh, mentioned yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. That was before this sort of second wave took off. Yeah. So uh, you know, we're just it really is hard to plan, and it um, is. not easy. I, I'm I'm going to go ahead and plan. We do a, a television show here in Canada, just mm-hmm. a half hour show to kind of you know connect with new donors and and turn people's attention towards Israel. We go to archaeological sites and, and uh, interview archaeologists and other guests, uh, tour guides and so on. And um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can set something up for either late March or, or uh, mid April. I don't want to go during Passover, but. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. hard in itself. Uh, I think um, I, I don't know how hopeful I am. Uh, anymore you know we all thought it would be fine in June or Mm. or May even and so I don't know I don't know but the Lord does what we've really tried to do is bring um, Israel or the other countries home now Mm. you know you've got to be really creative in this time and so we've done like an online 30-day tour people can read through the sites and I wrote on every single site and For 30 days, we posted a new site. Some of them are video at the site. And so it's just Mm -hmm. at least we can increase and try to keep, you know, I think our goals are to interest in Israel and help people learn and grow. Um, And and so we've tried to continue to do that to our very best, even though we're not over there right now. And Mm -hmm. part of it I'm going to take as a blessing because I don't have time to write in general on all the things that I've always hoped we could get done and we've used this time to do it. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's talk in general about uh, sort of the, uh, the strategy or the philosophy behind uh, taking, taking people to Israel. Um, We've alluded to it, but, but tell me, you know, why is it so important that, that young people, and I would say particularly future pastors um, to, to experience Israel? So I would say, and I think the center, probably like you also, our goal is not tourism. It's uh, to take people and help them study the land so that they can better understand the word of God and pass it on to um, the people that they're going to teach. And so Mm -hmm. I had the ability to go when I was out of college um, forever, forever 
change. It can't not change the way that you teach and the way that you would preach or even lead someone. Standing in the desert and understanding what happened there and why God brought all his leaders through there and feeling it and seeing the rugged terrain and applying the text to it and understanding the culture of the time period and all of it um, wraps itself together in such a way that it will absolutely transform anything that you will stand up and say on a, on a pulpit or in front of anybody. And I've had, I'm sure you have too. So many people say, why didn't I do this when I was younger? Cause it would have entirely changed my entire ministry for the rest of my life. And I know that it's true mm-hmm. and it's hard to explain before you go what happens, but the geography of the land is as much a character as any person in the Bible. And when you understand the geography and the movements through the land and the routes and why God placed this person there because it was major roadways and that's how the message spread. It all comes together in your mind and it's like this little explosion of, oh my goodness, God is even more amazing than I ever could have thought he was. And look how that was put together. And it just is a major shift in, and you, you can never, forget what it looks like or what you saw or what you learned because it was right in front of your face. So Mm -hmm. I I can't explain enough how much it increases your ability to communicate um, the word of God to people. And for me, that is a worthy investment. Yeah. You're preaching to the choir, sister. But I know. I, I get like, ah. <laughs> no, no, it's fantastic. And I, I am in total agreement with you. This has been uh, this has been what the Lord put on my heart when I first uh, began to take over First Century Foundations, this organization that we're a part of here, uh, in that, you know, our colleges here in Canada weren't doing this. And um, I just really felt like this was something we needed to champion and promote. And so we're kind of doing it on our own. We're not doing it with the, with the backing of the denomination. Although, although I have the support, you know, of our, our, of our general superintendent, but uh, um, that's, that's verbal only at this point, but we are, (laughs) uh, we're grateful for that. And uh, it's been a, a ride to just get this one college, uh, our college here in Ontario on board. And so, um, yeah, I'm just debating. Do I do I try and push for another one next August and see what happens? We're going to have to go out to the to the students soon with that if we want to do it. But anyhow, I love hearing you share uh, about the change uh, that experiencing Israel makes for someone, especially someone who is a student of the Word uh, and wants to be a teacher of the Word. You know, my experience did not happen right out of college. I was one of those uh, arrogant pastors who thought I didn't need to go to Israel. I, I, you know, did my whole sort of 30 years almost or, or 25 years of ministry without experiencing this. And um, uh, it wasn't, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't not like Israel or anything like that. I just didn't feel like I needed to go. And um I used to say that to people. I don't. I don't have to go to Israel to, you know, to believe. Uh, you know, it's not going to make my faith any different. It's. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God, and and I had all the excuses. But, um, you know, one day I got talked into going by my dad actually, and um, it was in it was in 2006. So I was I was well into my into my pastoral ministry, and um, totally totally changed. Um, how I felt, not, not about, about God, but, but about, uh, you know, why people should have this experience. And uh, from that moment on, I mean, you're right. You can't, you can't read a scripture passage anymore without visualizing the place, uh, not just the place, but the, you know, the landscape, the, the topography, the, the climate, all of those things. And picture behind me. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. The Road. <laughs> that's awesome. I that is that a painting? Is that an oil? No, I took it on my iPhone. Oh and, wow! And it's, it's a photograph. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I have I have a couple little watercolors in my office here, and I have a you can't see it, but there's a uh, you know one of those panoramas of Jerusalem on oh, yeah. my wall, but yes. Yeah. Every tour, every good tourist has one of those. Uh, 
-hmm. yeah or or had at some point but um i think it's amazing i think that that uh, this is something that we want to see grow uh, here in canada in terms of of getting our students to have this experience i personally believe like yourself that that People will never teach, they'll never pastor the same uh, once they have, they have gone to Israel. And like you, I understand that not everybody else gets that. Uh, they hear us talk and they think that we're these crazy Israel people, uh, but um, we've got to figure out a way to, to get people to have this experience. And I mean, not just students either. We take, we take groups of adults. We do tours uh, every year as well, but I love the educational component of this. Um, tell us a little bit about the course material. Um, what, what are some of the courses that you guys teach? Yeah. So when we go over, especially for students, we have a three week program. They can get either three or six credits from it. Um, but there's a lot of work they need to do ahead of time, but it's all work. I would say that's beneficial for the rest of their life. So it's the map work, the road routes, the ridge routes, why were they placed where they were. Um, but when you start to put it all together, it makes a lot of sense. You know, God chose Israel to spread the gospel to the whole world because you had to travel through as well to get everywhere. And so mm. it's just brilliant. First of all, I think that's yeah. brilliant in itself. He's so brilliant, isn't he? Uh, so um, <laughs> yes, we have the students and they've got to do quite a bit of map work along the way. Um, it's fun. They get to color and they journal when we're there. But we also have them read uh, a few books before they go. I don't really want them doing all of that work while they're there because I want them to be fully engaged. So we have them right. journal when they're there. But And then when we get back, um, we have a whole syllabus that they follow. But when they get back, they write us a paper um, that kind of combines what we taught them on the trip. Because every site we go to, we unpack the geography, the culture of the time period, um, what went on in history in the time period, what language was being used and how was the text written and what to, how does that impact or affect? And then what was the spiritual climate of the time period? Because that impacts everything that was going on, whether it was polytheism or belief in one God or any of that. They've got to choose a place and unpack those elements and then report back to us the what has shifted or what they have learned about that specific location. Um, and just to combine all of those things together, because I hope mm -hmm. that's what they'll do the rest of their life. Um, and then we always ask them the question, what was said at the time, what was meant by what was said, not what am I telling it to say, um, but what was it really trying to say? And then mm -hmm. how do you apply it to your life today? And I think then you get your best, uh, hope of what the text is is saying and meaning and i would say that 10 times out of 10 it's more amazing than what you ever could have imagined um yeah. the nuances in scripture and in language and what was going on it's there's just so much to unpack that still i'm i you know before i go to bed i read my bible and then i don't sleep because I'm like what what? <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, that's but it's great. fun. It's fun to do. It's great. Yeah, so that's yeah. kind of what we do in, in those courses. And then we do the same thing in Greece, Turkey, and Italy. And then we have other programs that are just for pastors, or if they're going to one of our seminaries or something, they can do it for a class. And then we walk them through those programs as well. So yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. I, uh, I love the journaling part, of course. I think that uh, um, keeping it simple for them while they're there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure uh, I ran into one of your groups uh, and that's how we initially made this connection. We were going into the, uh, going into the tunnel, Hezekiah's tunnel, the, the water oh, yeah. tunnel, and uh, all these boisterous students. We were actually, I think, <laughs> We, we were shooting, we were, we were going in to shoot for the television show and, uh, and, and this great big group of students came and we're like, oh man, we can't go in there ahead of them because we won't be able to hear anything, you know? So, uh, but anyway, I got He's talking to learning. Yeah. got talking to one of the profs and I think that's how we initially connected. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was so great 
to be able to see all these young people so excited about being there and about, you know, having the experience and, and doing the learning. I just thought it was fantastic. And the reason I asked the question of the, of the, the professor who was with them was, you know, they're all carrying uh, pens and, and yeah. notebooks and, and, you know, doing the, the whole thing. And I thought, this is really cool. And yeah. uh, it was very cool for me because we had already been discussing, you know, how do we, how do we get something like this going? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so knowing there was a program out there, because I had no idea, uh, yeah. just was so helpful. So we really appreciated the input that you gave. And um, I love the perspective that you bring today as well. Now, um, one of the elements we are working into our program is, is also helping students uh, connect with and understand modern day Israel. Uh, is that a part of your program as well? It is. So, you know, we have all of our teachers that we send because we make sure that we have very trained professors that will go with our students, super picky about their learning matters. Um, and so I, we have that, but we've paired them with our guides in Israel as well and made great teams. And so really our Israeli guides focus a lot when they are teaching on modern day Israel, you know, especially when you're going north to um, the border of uh, where Damascus is in Syria and Lebanon, they are teaching modern day or past wars that they have been through. Um, we do go through the politics of modern day Israel as well and the system of, that they use and just a lot of um, what is going on even in Israel today. So, and they experience it because we've got them in it. So mm -hmm. it's, we don't just tell them about things, they have to experience it as well. So um, we push them out into society and let them experience and learn. And then we ask questions and we'll do a, maybe a night seminar on modern Israel so that they, they get that as well. And we try to give it from several perspectives because you know how many perspectives there are uh, yeah. in that land, right? And so it's good that they hear several voices um, as a whole to learn and so we we try to incorporate and give them as much as we can look when we take them they are inundated and they have their notes and and they can sleep when they get home um <laughs> and and they learn because i've got them for this short amount of time and i want to put as much as i possibly can in them and you know that it'll pour out for the next 60 years <laughs> Right. So right. For me, that that's the, the hope and goal. So. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. We hope to uh, had lined up a couple of different seminars. We've got some sort of friends in Israel that, that are leaders of ministries that we know of there. One, one's called the Jerusalem Institute of Justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, I don't know if you're familiar, but they work with, um, with both, uh, you know, Jews and Arabs and, and fight for human rights in the land of Israel. We want people to get that sort of balanced perspective. Yeah. Uh, but we also, we also want people to understand the other side. And so um, a gentleman named Itamar Marcus from the Palestinian Media Watch uh, was going to come in and speak to speak to the students as well. So, so it's a great way to I think help them mm -hmm. um, uh, position themselves, uh, understand what their their view of all of this is going to be, and um, what they get fed in the media is not those things. So, oh, I know from living there too. It's just it's just not right. <laughs> so, no, no, it really isn't. Yeah, it really it's isn't. A story for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I get into, I try and stay away from them. Certainly on, on social media, I don't involve myself in these discussions, but, but uh, you get into some discussions with people, uh, well-meaning Christian, uh, you know, some evangelical people who, who just have such a slanted view. Um, and some of them don't even, don't even support uh, Israel or the idea of, uh, you know, the modern nation of Israel. It's, uh, it's quite disheartening. Find that more and more it's increasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for sure. For sure. 
Well, Amy, I really appreciate you taking some time with us today and uh, giving us this overview. Now, if I were to, uh, you know, just give you a few minutes to talk to not just students, but to people in general about uh, about experiencing Israel, uh, you know, what impassioned plea would you would you give? Oh, there's there's really so much. I. I, it, it's quite emotional. I don't think I'll be emotional when I talk about it, but then I'm like, what am I doing? Because it really does matter that much. I guess um, I know that God can meet you anywhere and you can have a relationship with God. And I know that he loves you. And I know these things. I think that if you want to maybe invest further in your devotional life or spiritual life or anything if you can invest in any way, that would be a brilliant way to do it is to go and see mm-hmm. an experience. And I think it matters who you go with. So for example, I look at whether the, is it a tourism company I'm going with, or is it someone like you who you want people to just learn and grow in their faith. And it's, right. it's not for you. It's your heart is for them and for the Christian world. And so for me, um, it, it made all the difference in the world in going. Um, the, when I read through my Bible, I like can highlight every single place I've been, which is almost every single place. And hmm. the minute I read it, I know, I know it. I know what it looks like. I can imagine, you know, uh, Jesus and his walk to Jerusalem and how long it took. And he had to have a lot of muscles. Um so I mean, it's just all of the little nuances that make the shift, I think, in your understanding. And God meets you in places you don't think he's going to. Uh, I always mm-hmm. have people going with expectations. Oh, I can't wait to get to Mount Carmel because it's there that he's going to tell me this and this. And no, that never happens, but he will meet you somewhere. <laughs> but there are yeah. powerful, powerful lessons that he teaches you. And if you go with the open heart, um and willingness to learn Mm -hmm. that is your most important thing i've taken a lot of pastors who've gone with that way and i've taken some who had to be knocked down a little bit by the lord when they got there but they came home amazing so i think just being open to what the lord is wanting to say to you and investing in the relationship you have with him and seeing his land and his people um it, it's just a massive shift. And I know that people could hear this all the time, but I am telling you, <laughs> it, I've yeah. never had a person in all of the thousands that we have taken come home and say, why did I do that? I've only right. ever heard that changed my life forever. And it was the best thing I have ever done, the best money I have ever spent. And I would do it again and again, if I could. So that that's what I can say. Um, and I wish I could just put everyone on a plane and take them over. Me I too. I, I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, you, you are absolutely dead on when you say that uh, it's sort of different for everybody, this, this experience and, and where they connect with God. Yeah. Um, I know lots of people who've had expectations about, oh, it, it's going to happen at the Garden Tomb, or it's going to happen at, uh, you know, at uh, the Sea of Galilee, or, and yet um, many of them will come to me and say, you know, it just, it kind of, it just really snuck up on me here, you know, at this place and somewhere that they wouldn't have even considered, you know, and, uh, but, but the Holy Spirit is like that. He's working uh, in the background when we're, when we don't even see or understand what he's doing. And uh, we just need to be open. And I think that uh, that experiencing that kind of uh, emotion in Israel, though, there's really nothing quite like that. And um, my feeling, you know, first time in, I, I was, I didn't have high expectations, honestly. Um, but from the moment we landed, from the moment the, the plane touched down, I, I felt something. I, and that's the only way I've been able to describe it to people is, is I kind of felt like I was coming home. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was so strange, such a, an odd feeling. 
and yet um, it's become a second home for me. And uh, the fact that I haven't been there since last November is just about driving me bonkers. I, we, we are desperate, my wife and I, to get back and uh, just, just be there. Uh, but also, you know, to see our friends and, and uh, so praying that that can happen soon and uh, yeah. praying the same for you and, and for your groups. And I just, uh, yeah. this has been great. It's so nice to meet you and to see oh, your face. So nice We've talked you. on the phone, I know. but uh, yeah. I was so happy yeah. to hear from you. It's like, yeah, he did it. <laughs> we did, we did it. And then it's anyway, okay. it, it, it will happen. Like it. it will happen. It will happen. Yeah. It will happen. So uh, God bless you, Amy. Thanks for your time today. It's been great to have you on the podcast. And um, yeah, wishing you all the best and get lots of good writing done in this uh, free time that you've been given. I know that's, that's been the biggest challenge is we have to stay busy and create content. You know, content is the buzzword these days, but. But you know what? I think uh, one last thing, sorry. The preparation. No, it's absolutely good you're doing to give people before they go and frankly if someone knows they're going to go or wants to go they need to start prepping themselves you know Mm -hmm. we can get them there we can teach them but it's also their responsibility to prepare their heart and their mind and their reading to get the most that they can out of it as well and so you know, we're not the Lord, but he wants to do it with them. And and so I would encourage that too, that even though this is sort of this lull time, it's not. It's a gift of a time where there's a lot of preparation that can happen. And then look what's going to happen when you get there. So so we'll take it like that. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll use sure. it like that. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good way to say it. <laughs> but let's Wonderful. get back to that already. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, thanks again. (laughs) Thank you so much. It's so good to meet you. And I hope I meet you in person someday. It'll happen. Maybe it'll happen. Yeah. You're in Israel so much. uh, It's bound to happen. Yeah. We'll see each other there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Great. Well, thank you for joining the podcast today. And I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Amy Flattery. She's been such an incredible resource for us in trying to set up our student tours that we call First Century Adventures. I mentioned that uh, this tour was set to go this past year, but of course, because of COVID, we have had to uh, postpone. We're trying to decide whether we can do something this coming year, and I want you to stay posted for that. I appreciate so much Amy taking the time to be with us. She really is an expert in this field and knows so many people uh, that can be helpful to us as we plan in the future. Uh, So check out Center for Holy Land Studies. We'll uh, put the website uh, here just uh, below. I believe that uh, I can give it to you before we're done here just now. Uh, If you want to go to holylandstudies.org, that is the website, and uh, lots of great information there on what they do, Amy and her team. Thanks for tuning in today. Remember, we are a ministry that is helping ministries on the ground in the land of Israel, Uh, especially during this COVID time. There are so many of our ministries that are involved in humanitarian aid, getting food out to those who are needy and helping those who are financially struggling. The economy in Israel has really taken a huge hit and uh, this most recent lockdown again has been problematic for everyone there. And so we wanna support and help the body of Messiah, uh, which is, uh, they are part of the church. They're our brothers and sisters. And so we encourage you if you uh, can and would be willing to donate, we would just appreciate that so much. You can go to our website, firstcenturyfoundations.com forward slash donate, and you can give in both Canada and the United States and be receipted for your giving. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and God bless you. Remember, as Christians, we stand with Israel.